Hello, um, it is now time after four months to do a, not a review, but a catch up on how the thermal performance of this laptop here is doing at the moment. If I disable the turbo boost on the CPU, then the temperatures are just heavenly. They work, not, no problem. But as soon as I enable the turbo back on, that's where mayhem comes loose. For example, I'll show you what happens when I run Cinebench. Let's see what Cinebench does. This is Cinebench R23. I am going to run it. Look at what happens to the temperatures here. Let's see. So temperatures are idle at 60, which is pretty much the same level as when it's under load for when the turbo boost is disabled. And you can see the temperatures are already skyrocketing toward 100 degrees. Which is not great, because that means that the CPU is actually throttling. Can you imagine a 4800H throttling? So therefore, we have to open this bad boy up to make sure that the thermal paste is indeed in a decent condition. Knowing me, it's probably because I'm a moron and I applied it wrong. Uh, and I was the one complaining about HP doing a check. So let's do that. All right, a bit of a weird setup here because, well, I don't have a proper studio, but that's okay. So we, use the, we do the usual, so we open up the laptop, open up all the screws around here, and then, you know, try and see how the paste is doing, because it's not doing great in terms of thermal performance at the moment, at least not with the turbo boost on. So let's go and do that. Just for reference, I will be using my fake I, I fix it toolkit here. So link will not be in the description below because I took it from a random place. Ah uh, yes, before you do anything with electronics, always make sure that you are free of static electricity because you don't want to damage your system. Do you? uh, a trick that I use to just, I don't know, touch something metal, like uh, the legs of the table for example, just ground myself just to make sure that I don't have any static electricity on me. Touching the wall also, also helps. As usual, a little pry tool here. Again, fake I fix it toolkit also known as Big Pen, uh, will uh, will come to my aid. All right, with the thing coming off now, we can see already there is some dust here. That's not great, is it? Although there is none here. That's, that's weird, so I have to look into that. We'll see what else goes on here. Now we have our normal screws, and after that it is as simple as just lifting it and then pushing it. So we'll be doing that and see how the paste looks. So I'm gonna go and follow the numbers here. Mind you, the screws don't come all the way out. Before I continue, I should probably make sure that the battery is disconnected, just for safety reasons. I've disconnected the battery. Uh, this time was easier than last time, because I've already opened it once, but definitely the first time was very hard to remove, so just be aware of that. All right, so the thing should now just come off loose. If I lift this up, okay. I will also need to remove two screws. Alright, so let's see what it looks like. Alright, I can see the GPU has some spots that have been missed. So this area here, for example, does not have thermal paste. And the CPU here does not seem to have much thermal paste here. Um, here, I believe I have torn a little piece of thermal pad here. But that's okay, it will just go back into place. All right, it's now time for me to clean this up and then, you know, reapply the paste. All right, so the CPU and GPU are now looking a bit better. It's a bit shinier. Now it's time for the thermal paste. All right, the thermal paste has been placed and now it's time to move this back into it. And then we'll see how it performs again uh, thermally. Obviously, don't forget to put the battery back in. You don't need much special to remove the dust from the cover, just a bit of air will do. Just either compressed can air or you know there are there are other ways let's just see if it works before i put the screws back on i hope not to see the blue screen of death mm -hmm. so it didn't turn up turn on okay but that's the same thing as last time so hopefully if i press it back up again yep that is fine i'm not sure if you can see what it says but it's the screen you'll see every time it happens so oh i should have pressed damn it but at least we know the laptop works so therefore we can just put the screws back in sorry about the exposure i'm not I'm not a professional, so any light I can get is the light I get. I'm also recording on a phone, and it's not a camera, so that's that's, that's what you get. Alright, so this is me. I'll uh, close the computer back up to make sure that uh, everything is good. We got the thermal paste from somewhere. I have to reopen this to make sure that this shit. Right, I had to reopen it because I forgot one of the... Um, thermal pads, but I guess that gives us an opportunity to see whether this time I did a good job at putting the thermal paste on or I didn't. So yes, we can see that the thermal application was a little better, it's more even, 
um, there is some on here too and the GPU as well or even but I can see there is still a bit less here but it makes up for the thermal paste on here so it is um, it is an okay application although I think I can do better which is I guess a good thing now all right so the missing bit I was missing is from here and that's for these two pieces of things here um, I'm not sure what they are, I'm going to assume they're voltage regulators, so I definitely don't want them to become hot. So let's pop this back in to make sure that, you know, we don't mess up any thermals for that. But that's an important component, so we need to make sure that is well cooled. I will obviously remove this and put the base back on, because otherwise you don't get a good application. You know, it sucks having to do this again, but uh, it's a learning experience, I guess. Just as before, mirror finish on both of them, and now I'll be applying the thermal paste once again. Yes, this time all the thermal paste, uh, all the uh, thermal pads are on where they're meant to be. Alright, I think I'm getting the hang of it now. Uh, now it's the third time that I'm repasting this laptop. Twice here in this session because I'm a moron. But, battery is still connected, I didn't bother this time. Uh, you, you should bother actually disconnecting it if it's the first time you do it. If you can. So now, all the things here can go back into place. Don't tell anyone, but it looks like I accidentally did this job while the computer was awake. So, uh, this is the very definition of a uh, open heart surgery. That's, let's not repeat that again. Alright, laptop is in shape, um, hopefully. I will now test it and see how it works. Uh, I will let you know about the results soon. I can see the temperature is now hovering around 60 degrees Celsius, which is not different from before. The one difference is the fans are not actually currently on so the fact that the temperature can stay at this point without the fans on is a very good sign but to make sure it's now time to run Cinebench and see how the temperature shoot up there we go and that's what I'm interested in before even with the ma uh, fans maxed out I the temperature about oh, 98 degrees Celsius average Whereas now, you can see that after the repaste, the temperature is better. Better. So, here we have a spike. Wow. Okay, so the CPU power draw was actually pretty high at that point, but it's now hovering around 54 watts. That's pretty good. And the temperature, the important part is the temperature, this is not max fans. Temperature is hovering around 85. If I put max fans on, it's time to put the max fans on and see how that the, that goes. So, um, a bit of a dip there. Max fans is doing a great job at keeping the temperature down. Look at that. So there is at least a 15 degrees Celsius drop from before. It's going down even more, and the test is running. So that's very good news. Look at that. Perfect. You can see here it's not thermally throttling, but. For some reason the core speed is not reaching its maximum yet and uh, I will have to investigate that. Uh, but the nice thing about open hardware monitors is that you can check the history um, of the core clock, temperature, power draw and whatever. I find this tool to be incredibly useful. I'm sure you've seen my setup. I had a laptop over there. Not a laptop, a, I had a monitor, a second monitor over there, a very old VGA port one. I just hooked it up and I use it to keep this open or maybe keep this open while I game or maybe have Discord open while I game and stuff like that. The laptop is now fine. Four months is not great for having to repaste the, the thermal paste. And obviously I think I'm at fault here, I didn't apply it properly. But at the beginning, I did see some very good temperature drops uh, when I first applied it. So I'm going to give some of the fault to the thermal paste. So right now, I've been using, so I've used the MX4 Arctic, right? And uh, I'm sure some of the viewers in my comment section in the previous video about the thermal paste and the thermal issues uh, will be able to give you better advice as to what thermal paste to use. I just went for this one because it's a cheaper thermal paste, it does the, it gets the job done and I don't mind opening up the laptop every every few months to just change the thermal paste. Um, that's because I'm a, you know, call me what you want, I just like doing this kind of stuff. So I hope you find this useful, 
Not sure how you'll find this useful, but if you're experiencing problems, it may be worth investing in a better thermal paste uh, solution. All in all, great temps. I will not be disabling the turbo boost because I want to make sure I'm on top of things when it comes to the thermal performance. Also, I mean, what's the point if you can if you can afford it thermally? What's the point of having a computer running it in low power mode? Um, if you you know if you, if you have the thermal room to do so. I mean, fine, you can keep the laptop forever, but after five years, maybe, if the CPU is now too, I don't know, too unstable or slow, I'll just drop the clock core down and then, you know, be done with it. Uh, until then, I'm just going to enjoy the laptop as it is, you know, enjoying the full maximum performance that it can offer. I've also overclocked the GPU, so that comes into play. I'm not sure if you've seen, but the GPU is actually constantly drawing 20, 20 watts. And that is because I am running my NVIDIA GPU as my main uh, video card. So for any application, it will try to use the, uh, the GPU. It's not the same as a Mac switch, as many of you may want with this particular laptop. It's a shame it's not here, but you know, it's, it's still great to be able to still choose a main graphic card. And uh, I, I mean, I'd like to think it makes temperature a bit more stable, but that could just be a placebo effect for me. So I'm done talking now. I hope I didn't waste too much of your time. And if you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up, you know. And if you really loved it for some reason, just click the subscribe button because, yeah, why not? Join join the community. Come over here. Have, have some fun with us. So until then, I will see you next time.